Okay, 5.8, uninhibited growth or decay. Um, so I've said for a while now that E, or that not exponential growth in the gay is something that happens a lot. Um, those models are usually based on an exponential base of E, so we can see the base right there. And then here's one way to represent it, A equals A sub zero E K T. Um, growth models would mean that the thing, the function is increasing. Decay models when the function is decreasing. Uh, that depends on the exponent. So since k is a constant, it's the we're going to find out in a moment that that's the growth rate. So it's e to the k t. So if t is is either zero or larger, because you don't go back in time. So if k is larger than zero here, we would get a growth rate or a growth model. And if k is less than zero, we would get like a negative. Uh, let's make that a zero point two. Let's go back for a second we might have a negative 0 0.2 times t and then a negative exponent and that would be giving you a decay function so the exponent basically tells you if it's a growth or a decay if you don't have a picture All right. <clears throat> so for some reason the book then switches so it used to say at and then it says well we're going to call for an uninhibited growth model and we're going to use n so n, so n of t is a of t a sub 0 becomes n sub 0 and then E, K, T. All right, so this is based on T in time. N is the number of cells. Uh, N sub 0 is the initial number. So N sub 0 is the initial number. Well, that would be when T equals 0. And mathematically, that should work, because if you use N sub 0 into this expression, actually, I put that one down there. And even though if you don't tell me what k is, I know that 0 times k is 0, so this would be n and then e to the power of 0, which is 1. So then you would just get n, and then actually has sub 0. So that is how much you have at t 0. Um, and k is a positive constant that represents the growth. So k again is positive because we grow. Okay, so let's say that we have a colony of bacteria that grows according to the law of uninhibited growth. And they gave me the function over here. N is measured in grams, and T is measured in these. Determine the initial amount of bacteria. Okay, well, if you didn't follow along a moment ago, we can still work it one more time. So initial would be when T is 0. When you plug that in, you would get 90. You get E, and then 0 0.05 times 0, which is 0. That makes all of that 1, and 90 times 1 is 90. But you could have just read that off. B. What is the growth rate? So the growth rate was k, and k is that number in front of t. So that's 0 0.05. So that is 5% growth in a day. Because t was in days. So the colony gets larger by 5% every day if we measure in grams. Uh, C, I'm skipping. That would be using like GeoGebra. D says, what is the population after five days? So that would just be a matter of plugging in the five. In case you're wondering, why am I doing this? All you have to do is plug this in. Well, plug that in and see if you can get the answer. Let me cheat. The answer that you should get is 115.56 grams. <coughs> so make sure you know how to use your calculator. And if you're typing along on your calculator, usually it would look like this. And then you do 0 0.05 times 5. And if you do it this way, you probably have a wrong answer. Because the exponent needs to be 0 0.05 times 5. So if you don't use brackets here, it's only going to use the 0 0.05 as an exponent. And so your answer would be way too big. Um, <coughs> okay? So make sure you know how to do that. E says, how long will it take for the population to reach 140 grams? So now the 140 is the outcome. And let's see. Well, that's only a one variable equation. Because only T is unknown. So you can divide. And then that's an exponential base E. So I'll take the natural log on both sides. That should work really well. And I get the natural log of 140 divided by 90. And on this side, I'm going to take the natural log since the basis match. Let me write that out once. 
since this base matches the natural log's base, I just get 0.05t. So 0.05t is equal to the natural log of 140 divided by 90 in brackets, and then t will be whatever the natural log of 140 divided by 90 is, and then that needs to be divided by 0 0.05. And then this would be when I would get the calculator. I'd type all this in in once, make sure I use brackets here, and then t <coughs> should give you, in this case, I think 8.83 days. So almost 9 days. F, what is the doubling time? Well, to double means that if you start with 90, double that would be 180. So you end up solving the same kind of a problem. And um, but I do want to show you something here. So in this case, you would get from, one, from 90, you go to 180. What happens when you divide it out by 90 first? Because you need to isolate your variable. So 180 divided by 90 is exactly 2. And we were doing what again? We were doubling it, right? And doubling is represented by a 2. That's not a coincidence, okay? Um, if I had started, for example, with uh, 120 grams, and doubling that would be 240, now let's see what would have changed there. So now this would be the 240, and then this would be 120. And then when you do divided by 120 here, that cancels. And on this side, we, <coughs> excuse me, we'd have 240 divided by 120, which is still 2. So the doubling time does not depend on the initial value, because the doubling time just depends on the amount of time it would take based on the growth rate that we have. So it's strictly based on the growth rate. So often, when you get used to it, when you say doubling, I may not even write this anymore. I may straight go for the 2 and solve it from there. So from this point it solves the same again. You need to take the natural log. So the natural log of 2, we've taken the natural log over here, would just give you 0.05t. So the doubling time would be whatever the natural log of 2 is, divided by 0 0.05. And since it took 8.83 days, this better be larger than 8. And in this case, it's 13.86 days. Okay. Let's do another one. Colony increases according to the law of uninhibited growth. If the number of bacteria doubles in four hours, find the function that gives the number of cells in the culture. And so this is why I spend a little time on this. So double means I get a two here. So A says it doubled, and I do know that it's it doesn't depend on that A sub zero anymore. It's E, and then it's the constant, growth constant, times time, and in this case time is measured in hours. Take the natural log of 2, you know, on this side you would get 4 times k. So my growth constant is the natural log of 2 divided by 4. Now you could plug this in the calculator and, 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 and give me the decimal version, but that would be uh, pretty inaccurate because you'd get a, just an approximation unless you want to get 7 decimals. So instead of just doing that, I'm going to say that the the, the model that I have here, based on time, the number that I have will be based on E and then the growth rate of ln2 over 4 times t. Okay, using that then, I can figure out how long it will be to triple. So triple would be E ln2 over 4 times t. Take the natural log on both sides. That brings that funky exponent down. And then t, in this case, is going to be ln3 divided by that thing. So the dividing is multiplying by the reciprocal, right? Because imagine I'm multiplying by this to cancel here, here, and here. So we can multiply this by 4 over ln2. Now you can get a calculator out. And when you do that, you get 6.34. And since the 4 was in hours, this is a time in hours. How long will it take for the population to double a second time? So if it started with a 1, 
then the 2 would represent double. Doubling it a second time would be represented then with a 4. So 4 is E, K, uh, sorry, we know what K is. K was ln 2 over 4 times T. Take the natural log of 4. Take the natural log on this side. Sorry about that. Take it on this side as well. So we would get um, ln 2, 4 times t. So t multiplied by the reciprocal 4 ln 2. t would be ln 4 times 4 divided by ln 2, which is rounded approximately 8 hours. But doesn't common sense should tell you that it's exactly 8 hours, right? Because if it doubles in 4, then doubling again should take another 4. So this, we didn't really need to do any of this. We could have just said, well, if it doubles in 4, then after 4, we'll have double, and then doubling that will take another 4, so it's going to double again in another 4 more hours. So 2 4s would give you 8 hours. So the answer here is actually exactly eight hours. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uninhibited radioactive decay. So decay works pretty much the same way, except now we know that k is less than zero. So that you know we start with an initial amount and it becomes less and less and less until it gets really close to zero, but not quite to zero. Fortunately, I have a little more room now. So let's see what we have. Traces of burnt wood along with an ancient stone, along with ancient stone tools. In an archaeological dig in Chile, were found to contain approximately 1.67% of the original amount of carbon-14. If the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,600 years, approximately when was it treated, cut, now. and burned? Okay. Um, so how do we solve that? Well, let's see what we know. It says the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,600 years. So let's say if you start it with 100 grams, right? The half-life means this. So half-life means the time it takes to end up with half of the original amount. So in 100 grams, we'll go to 50 grams, okay? And that process is going to take 5,600 years. Okay, well, let's fill that in based on sort of the function that was given to us. So a sub t is a sub 0 e k t. So let's say the original amount was 50. Sorry, the original amount was 100. And the constants we don't know, but we know that t was 5,600 years. And then after that, you'd only have 50. And then if you solve this, you do divide by 100 divided by 50, or divide by 100 again, and that cancels, and that would give you a half. And again, I'm just going to do this once. Notice that that half is not a coincidence. Okay, the half doesn't depend on the original amount. If I had picked, you know, 800 here, and then half of it would be 400, right? And then I can swap these two out, so I don't have this one anymore, and I don't have this one anymore. I fill that in with the different amounts. <coughs> so that would be what the original amount was 800, and I'm only left with 400, and 400 divided by 800 is also a half. So you can see that, again, the the initial amount does not influence how long it takes to end up with only half of it. So usually what people do is you just put the half over here and solve this straightforward uh, or right away without messing with the initial amounts. So take the natural log on both sides. That would give you the natural log of a half on this side here. You get 5600k. That means that the growth constant, the natural log of a half, divided by 5600. Now, in case you 
wondering if this works. Uh, logs have pictures that look like this, right? Where the natural log of 1 is exactly 0. So the natural log of something less than 1, so for example, the natural log of a half, is going to give you a value less than 0. So this does represent, this is indeed a negative number. Okay, and that was important for us because we needed to have a decay function here. We're good so far? Because I'm still a long way from what I need to do. So all this was so that I could write the following. I know that I have a function here that looks a little like this. So it says e to the exponent of the natural log of a half divided by 5600 times t. Okay, what, what did I actually need to find? Um, so right now we have 1.67% of the original amount is left and I need to be able to use that somehow to figure out when the original tree was cut. So again, if the original amount is a sub 0, then 1.67% of that would be 0. Let's see, 167 times the original amount, right? And, and so that is what we're interested in. We're interested in when do I have this left? And I'm running out of room a little bit over here, so let me erase. Let me erase a little bit over here. Because what I'm trying to say, I need more room for it. Okay, so back one more time. So we're interested in when do I have 0 0.0167 of the original amount left when we know that the function is given by this awful contraption. And let's see what happens here. If you divide by a sub 0, do you guys see that, again, if you're just interested in, or if you know that it uh, if you're given a percentage, then the original amount doesn't matter. It just cancels itself out. So we're actually just solving it for this thing over here. And that's not nearly as bad as it looked initially. Take the natural log on both sides. So the natural log of 0 0.0167. And on this side, you would just get the natural log of a half divided by 5600 times t. And so to find t, you would take the reciprocal of that and multiply it on the other side. So we have this, and multiply that by 5600, and we're going to divide that by the natural log of a half. Now, this was a negative, but so is this. So t should come out as a positive number here. And if you do that right, then we get approximately 33,062 years. Just keep in mind that this time was given in years. And that's it. Thanks.